Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. And as I promised in my last video, I'm doing another one with one of these uh, new embossing folders with coordinating cutting dies that Simon Says Stamp just released uh, in their Let's Chill release. So this time I'm using the Floral Harmony folder and like I do with all of Simon's specifically, because different embossing folders from different brands, different thicknesses, all the things. Um, with Simon's folders, I use my Spellbinders Platinum 6, and I have the platform, and I use two metal shims. And I lightly mist the cardstock or paper I'm working with, just, just a couple little light spritzes of water to help everything emboss better and alleviate any cracking especially with this cardstock this is simon's 120 pound smooth white cardstock um but with these embossing folders and most embossing folders in general it usually will tell you um different options depending on what machine you're using you know that sort of thing this is what works for me so that's what i did i embossed a panel of white cardstock with this folder and then I'm going to repeat the process with a second piece of cardstock. I lay out my little flower sack cloth uh, when I'm misting the cardstock, just so I'm not getting water everywhere. Like even then, it's a couple light mists. You don't need to like soak the cardstock, but it does help. Um, it helps you get a better impression. And then, like I said, it helps to kind of alleviate any cracking because embossing folders like this and other like 3d embossing folders you know that that impress a lot of detail can easily crack cardstock so if you get it just a little bit of moisture in there it helps so with the second panel i'm going to use the coordinating wafer dies and two of the flowers on this um like image are very close together so i realized i couldn't die cut them all at the same time so i just put two wafer dies in place you just kind of fiddle you know, like you shimmy it that's kind of one of the nice things about these images being embossed it's like oh you just shimmy it and then they just fit in place and I don't know why I find it really satisfying <laughs> I did show in my last video um a little trick to like mark the emboss folder and mark the wafer die with uh a sharpie marker you know so you know where things line up with this it was I didn't find it was necessary at all like it just was easy and it was also obvious like which wafer die worked with which flower so I die cut the first two and then repeated the process die cut a third and um just like before with these like when you die cut it does press them flat but you don't lose the detail it's all still there I I don't know why I just again I find it really fascinating like it's still fabulous but to get the the raised detail or like the dimension I guess back is I just line them back up in the folder um I almost I almost considered like taping them in place but I just had to slow down and pay attention when I was doing this and they just fit because same thing same as like lining up the die they just kind of you just kind of shimmy it and the, the little raised edges they all just kind of fit ran it back through the same way re-embossed the die cut pieces and now I've got this gorgeous embossed impression and the flowers I had to like show this you know on camera because again my filming lights are very bright so that y'all can see what I'm doing but it also kind of washes out the detail with something like this, especially right now when like when it's white on white. But yeah, the detail is just fabulous. And of course, when I was looking at this, I was like, ooh, I could just do like black, my black, white and gold, you know, this would make a gorgeous wedding card. <laughs> but I was like, no, I want a color. This is what I want to do. So I'm going to do no line Copic coloring, which I don't do very often. I think I've mentioned this before. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I've done a few videos in the past doing no line coloring. Um, it's for me, I find it very time consuming and I just don't overly enjoy it. However, I really enjoyed coloring this um, right now or right before this second. That was real time. Now it's super sped up. This did take a while. It took about a good hour I think I could have done it faster but the thing with co me coloring on camera I have to like you know keep my image on the screen so you guys can see it and I also struggled because 
again, my filming lights are very bright. So it's very hard for me to see. Like if you guys could see, I was like hunched right over. You, you can kind of see my hair peeking out at times. Um, I had to kind of lean down to see where everything was. Um, this point I slowed, I slowed down the editing just a tiny bit. I was doing lightest to darkest with my coloring, which I'll get back to in a second. But for this, when you have a transition and you're finding that your Copic colors are like too far apart, you know, your, your dark to your light is too far apart and they're not blending the way you want. Scribble your darkest color onto a non-porous surface. I just use a little acrylic stamping block. And then I pick up that darkest color with my medium color and I color with that. So you just keep picking it up and coloring. It doesn't hurt your markers. I scribble off the medium color marker just to make sure like I scribble it off on some scrap paper to remove any of the darkest color and it's good to go. And that just helps that blend in between everything. So with all this coloring, like I'd mentioned, I did lightest to darkest, which if anyone who's watched me do Copic coloring on other, you know, videos, I generally go darkest to lightest because I'm lazy. <laughs> There's no like, it's not a special trick or anything. It's just laziness. Um, and I can go faster. However, you have way more control when you do lightest to darkest. And with things like this, with like a no line or just specifically coloring like the, these embossed images, I found it was easier to do lightest to darkest. And I would just go along and I everything was just a three color blend. You can see the colors on the caps here, even though it's again, super sped up, super sped up. But I laid down the color with the, the three large flowers that I cut and um, embossed and cut. On the main panel, I just used the lightest color just to color the petals. Did not add any detail, anything, because it's irrelevant. I just wanted that little bit of color because you'll be able to see it just slightly, like if you tilt the card after everything's done, but it doesn't need the detail. The detail was done on those die cut individual ones. And then the actual main panel, um, the larger flowers in the cluster, like or uh, we'll call them the medium, the medium sized flowers in the cluster. I put a little more effort into using the, um, you know, the different three colors, etc. And then all of the, sorry, I keep like hitting my microphone. I'm all over the place today. Anyway, <laughs> all of the like smaller flowers, I still did a three color blend. I just didn't put as much effort in a sense to them. Although at the same time, they don't, need as much like as you start as it all starts coming together it just works it's it's one of those things where you know you never know when you first start however again I do find that coloring embossed images like this like dry embossed and they've got the raised edge I just I genuinely liked it I prefer this form of no line coloring versus like stamping an image and doing no line I don't know what it is but for me personally I just I will do this again Whereas stamping images and doing the no line coloring with Copics, it's different with watercolor. But with Copics, I just find, I think I just get, I don't know, too frustrated. It's just not for me. But that's fine. There's some artists out there that are just phenomenal, phenomenal with no line coloring. You know, they'll stamp images and they just make them like pop right off the card, you know. But this is what I did and I did enjoy it. It was... It was fun adding the color and, you know, so then the texture starts really coming out. And then once I was done, I added glitter. <laughs> I was just, you don't, it, it wasn't needed really because like the color and the details there and all the texture. But I was looking at these flowers and I was like, ooh, I could use my aqua shimmer pen. So that's what I did. And since these were all colored with Copics, they will not react. So the colors won't move around. Um, and which I'm only mentioning because if you color with like a water-based, you know, marker, or if you did like a watercolor, anything like that, if you go back with something like this aqua shimmer pen or any other product that is water-based, it will reactivate the colors. Whereas on Copics, nothing. So I just slapped on the aqua shimmer. I heavily covered the three individual flowers. And then I just added um, some shimmer to again, like the medium size flowers in this cluster. I left everything else because I'm going to add splatter. <laughs> and I will show at the end because again, my lights wash out everything. You cannot fully appreciate just how sparkly these are. Like, oh, 
the aqua shimmer pen honestly is kind of a must-have i've used these off and on for how many years now and i've lost count of how many videos and every time i pull it out and i'm reminded about how much i love it so then be prepared to see it in many videos again coming up <laughs> so i placed the flowers just on the panel i just didn't adhere them or anything i just placed them stuck them in my splat box and then my first layer of shimmer is going to be just perfect pearl powder mixed with water um I mentioned this in my last video I had mixed the perfect curl powder with the gouache and I didn't it didn't do anything you know it was just you didn't see the shimmer doing it separately which I already knew some days my brain just doesn't work this makes such a pretty splatter you, again you don't really see it as much on camera but in real life it's just so pretty like this is another like I think you know everyone should have in their stash because a little jar of ranger perfect pearl powder is only a couple dollars it's not very much um it's just so pretty I love it so I did that splatter and then I did do just white gouache mixed with a little bit of water splattered that on as well let all that dry off camera, I had also just embossed a scrap of cardstock and colored it with Copics because I'm going to put that on the inside because you need that on the inside of the cards. That's also why I don't often use embossing folders because then I'm like, what do I do with the inside? You know, because you, you know what I mean? So these I was like, ooh, I can always die cut an extra piece and add that to the inside. So anyway, the background, all that splatter was dry. I trimmed it down. I took off like a quarter inch off each side. And then I backed this with some Studio Caudia foam tape. This time I wanted a little bit more dimension. So this is normal thickness foam tape because usually I use Simon's Big Mama foam tape. And if you ever have issues with release paper on foam tape coming off, this I've shown this in like many videos in the past. I just use like my scissors or my little die pick, like the little pointy end that you press out the pieces out of wafer dies and things like that just to wiggle in between the release paper and the foam tape just to get it up and then it's good to go depends on the foam tape and so, honestly it depends on the day i usually never have issues with this foam tape at all and then of course when i'm filming it was like nope i am not releasing at all <laughs> so i use my scissors and that was perfect so i use that same foam tape on the backs of these individual flowers so again they're popped up a little bit with the dimension and oh, i can't I would, if I had Laura Bassin's voice, I would sing her voice. It's, it's playing in the back of my mind right now. Dimension is life. Because <laughs> it's true. It just, technically this card is simple-ish, you know, when it all comes together. But all the time and effort really was put into the coloring. But again, the flowers being popped up. I really genuinely just am having so much fun with these folders and the coordinating wafer dies. Uh, the sentiment strip. I'm like getting sidetracked. Uh, it's from the Thinking of You Sentiment Strip Pack from Simon. This is one of my like oldie but goodie faves. I always reach for this one. And I trimmed them down. I added one to the front, added one to the inside with that extra flower that I had colored. And then on the outside of the card, I added my also faves, uh, the Studio Caudia Round Iridescent Gems. No rhyme or reason to these. No, you know, I have no idea even how many added. I just, I was like, it looks good here, 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 here. <laughs> and just adhered them into place. And that was it. This card was on it. It was fun. It was fun. I haven't colored with my Copics in a while. I can't even remember the last time I posted a video with them, but I really enjoyed this. And just wait, I'm going to, I'm a boat. You can kind of see the shimmer and the sparkle, but wait, just wait right here, right there. Like, Oh, love. Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen. Love it. I'll have a link to it. Just like everything else, I will have a link to all the supplies I used um, in the description box below the video, as well as on my blog. My blog post is always the first link below my videos, and it takes you directly to the post. You don't have to search around or hop around, nothing like that. And in the blog post, it's picture links, so it's just a little easier to navigate. I'll have the pictures, all the things. So you can check that out below if you are interested. And then at the end of the video, I'll link to the previous one I did with the other embossing folder. Stay tuned. I'll have more coming with the other embossing folders that I haven't used yet. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye. <laughs>